Hello fiends and fiendettes and welcome to the Pit of Doom. This is Learned Rob here and today I'm doing a video review of a Blu-ray I received before Christmas. And that Blu-ray is Arrow's excellent release of Elvira, Mistress of the Dark. Now, those of you who don't know, Elvira, Mistress of the Dark was a comedy released in 1987-88, depending on where you were in the world featuring the lovely Cassandra Peterson as her iconic creation, Elvira, Mistress of the Dark. The film itself wasn't a huge hit when it was first released to the cinemas, but did go on to become a cult hit on VHS and then DVD, and now finally, Blu-ray. Now this isn't the first Blu-ray release of this, it was released I believe in Spain and Germany at um, some point in 2017. But this is probably the best version you can buy. And as you can see, Arrow has slipped in a lovely slipcase featuring some all new artwork, which some people like, some people don't. Obviously, inside that, you have your standard Armour Ray Blu ray case. You open it up, you've got a nice disc there. If you've got the first pressing like me, you've also got a booklet, and you get the now standard Arrow reversible sleeve with the original artwork on it. This is a lovely little package as usual for Arrow. You know the book itself features a all new essay or two on the uh, production of the film, some lovely stills as you can see. You know, it's, it, it's a nice looking little package as you'd expect from Arrow. Right at the back you've got some technical uh, information about the restoration. I don't know if you can read that, but you can pause it and maybe read that there. It's it's what you expect from Arrow. Now, the disc itself has a lot of special features on it. Apparently, it's a, a brand new restoration from a 4K scan of the original film element, so it's it's the best quality you can probably get. Although you will see some people online saying, "Oh, it looks a bit grainy compared to some of the other releases." That's because they were heavily filtered and heavily colour rebalanced, whereas this is the film as it was originally shot and intended to be seen on 35mm film. It's got the original stereo soundtrack with subtitles. It's got an introduction to the film by the director, James Signorelli. It's got a 2017 audio commentary by James Signorelli, which is also hosted by famous Fangoria editor Tony Timpone. Um, there is an audio commentary with Patterson Lundquist, who is the webmaster for Elvira's official website, and was a judge on the US talent show The Search for the Next Elvira. There's an archive audio commentary featuring Cassandra herself with Edie McClurg and the writer John Paragon. But then we get to the real meat of the extras. You get a newly re-edited version of Too Macabre, the making of Elvira, Mistress of the Dark. This is a newly revised version for 2018 and it is a feature-length documentary which goes into quite a bit of detail about how the film came to be, the film's production, its release and its life after its release. There's also a featurette called Recipe for Terror, the creation of the pot monster, where some of the film's effects technicians discuss one of the film's most memorable moments, which is the uh, living casserole creature. Um, you get some original storyboards, a huge set of image galleries, two trailers, the original US theatrical and some teaser, and obviously the reversible sleeve. There, Elvira, Mistress of the Dark. It's excellent. Now, I love the film, it's hilarious. For those who've never actually seen the film, here's a quick recap. Elvira is a struggling TV host in Los Angeles whose mysterious aunt, that she's never met, dies, leaving Elvira her house, her money, her dog, and her recipe book. Now, unbeknownst to Elvira, her aunt was a witch, the Mistress of the Dark, and Elvira will now inherit this and become Mistress of the Dark herself. And the recipe book is a spell book. Unfortunately, her evil uncle, Vinny, wants the book for himself so he can become master of the dark and rule the world. Elvira goes to her aunt's old hometown of Falwell, Massachusetts. Yes, it's set in witch hunt country. 
and struggles to adapt to the local town. The locals are very prudish and don't like her. Apart from the teenagers, of course, because teenagers, who wouldn't like an amazingly hot goth chick with huge ideas coming to town and shaking things up? She, Elvira, falls in love with the owner of the local cinema and eventually has a showdown with Uncle Vinner after she's nearly burnt at the stake. Saves the world, has the town people love her, and gets to live out her dream of being a Vegas showgirl. And that's it. It's fun. The humour is not quite, I think, what people expect at the time. I think people were expecting something a little bit more bawdy and a little bit more innuendo laden. But as is mentioned in the documentary, there were plans at the time for an Elvira sitcom and an Elvira Saturday morning cartoon, so they didn't want to go too crude with the jokes. It probably would have been a bigger hit and far more successful initially had it been that crude, but the option they went with is still fun. I love the film. I'm, this is probably the fourth or fifth copy of the film I've had in the last 20 years or so. I've had it on VHS, DVD, digital download. I love this film. So do many others. Hence, this was probably one of Arrow's most requested releases. Indeed, it was first teased this time last year, and every month when Arrow announced their releases on the web, on their Facebook page, people wanted to know where this was. It took them a whole year to get through everything to get this to market. Um. I'm going to give it 5 out of 5. Ooh, there we go. There we go, back in focus. Yeah, I'm going to give it 5 out of 5 fiends because it's an excellent film. It's an excellent transfer. Um, I'll show a few stills in a moment just to show this. And it is well worth your money. So this is Learn to Drop. You'll see some stills in a second. After the stills have finished, if you like the video, hit like, hit subscribe. Let me know. If you don't like the film, tell me why. If you love the film, tell me why. So again, this is Leonard Rob saying so long.